Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to today's lecture on the CC407 Auditing and Investigations. Our topic, to, our topic today is auditing of electronic data processing systems. Auditing of electronic data processing systems or auditing of computerized accounting systems. That's what we want to look at today. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to understand the features of EDP systems, the controls which normally apply to EDP systems, the areas of audit risk to be evaluated by the auditor, and the auditor's approaches to uh, computerized uh, audit, to audit of computer systems. We'll also let you know how it differs from the traditional audit, which is normally carried out by auditors. During the lecture, you can always ask questions where you don't understand. You don't have to wait until we finish or until I ask you before you you bust you you bust in and then you ask your questions. It will help you to follow up and understand. At the same time, when I ask you questions during the during the lecture, whether or not you know the answers, make sure you respond so that I can know that at least you are following us. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Eleven yes, of sir. us have joined. Eleven of us have joined now. Leaving out uh, uh, one. Uh, okay, twelve of you have joined now. That is the number for last week. So maybe we will have more people this week. I don't know. Let's take a quick attendance then, so that uh, we we know that. Uh, um if you just hear your name you answer to it uh present sir present sir a bank to philos present sir how can i be esther present sir adeniola present sir Present, sir. Oh, yes, sorry, Olua. Present, sir. Ola, Wumi. Ola, Wumi, what? Muidin, sir. Present, sir. Ola, Wumi, Muidin. The second, Mumi, sorry, Olua. Obolo, Mumi, sorry, Olua. Present, sir. Okay, gift. Gift. Gift is online, but has run away. Okay. I did do you. Present. So, is there anyone who I have not called and who is here? Good afternoon, sir. I'm online. Adekola Bissala, you've not called my name. Okay, Adekola Bissala, you're recognized and they're marked. Who else again? So, that seems to be all. From our end, Abby. Okay. The number that attended last week seems to be the same. I mean, I said last week, uh, two days ago, seems to be the same now. Maybe the remaining eight others. I told you to help look for them. Maybe your efforts have not generated results in, in getting them. Let's make a start now. In the course of your basic auditing, in three or eight level, uh, which was taught by this Adedeji. The new person that is just joining, tell us your name when you when you when you unmute your audio, so that we can take your attendance. Can we have that quickly? The person is not coming up. Okay, because somebody just. Oh, oh, somebody withdrew, not even joining. Maybe somebody lost internet because we are reduced to... Okay, the person has come up again. I've joined. So, Salami, are they doing, sir? You've called my name already. All right. You, your internet there is fluctuating. Okay. Yes, sir. In your previous auditing studies, uh, you will have, you will have been taught that the audit of financial statements 
take place in normal, under normal conditions, under physical conditions. In, in the sense that the technology being used is manual. Talking of accounting technology, there are three types of technologies. The manual technology, the mechanical technology, and the EDP, the, 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 mecha, the automated technology. Under the manual technology, that's when you have your cash books, uh, your ledgers, all being in hard form. Uh, documents are manually processed through all those documents, I mean, all, all those books, travel balance extracted, all the accounts are prepared, all using manual. Uh, manual. Most businesses, especially small scale businesses, still use that methodology today. And most of our people who, who do not train long ago in the, in the old days when we trained, do not even know those manual methods. For instance, if I say a bank should identify a ledger, if I show him a ledger in, 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 in practice, if I show him a ledger, he may not even know what a ledger is because he has not seen one before, you know? So I will give you an experience as we go on in the lecture of a charter accountant who, who is in a client uh, uh, company organization who does not know what an income cash book is when I was auditing the organization. Just when I saw it on his table, after six months of disagreement on that matter, I told him this is, this is the cash book I've been asking for which you have not been able to produce. And he doesn't know what an income cash book is because in, in, in his training, he, he are not trained to recognize or to, or to work on such manual methods that they should know. That is the manual method of accounting. The mechanical method one is machine assisted, but not fully automated. In some systems whereby purchases and their sales are partly automated using punched cards, and some other mechanical methods. Those things used to operate in the 80s to early 90s before the advent of EDPs became more uh, pronounced, all right? So we now have the EDPs operating in almost every organization. Even the small, small business itself, they now have semi-automated systems. In, in, in all of these, the, the editor becomes challenged because the environment is becoming different, you know. There are benefits associated with their computerized accounting systems. The benefit is that information becomes timely generated and then the errors are reduced because if the computer system, if the computer software is correctly designed and the, the inputs are fed into it, the output should normally be good. That is what brings you to what we call the GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. What to put into the computer is what to take uh, from it. So that is the experience of that group. So uh, all the benefits of information systems can be derived from computerized system, timeliness, accuracy. Because in the past, when you're using manual method, it may take a very long time before your books are ready. Does any of us remember the, the olden days in the banks when cashiers used to balance their, their accounts every day? before they leave uh, the bank. So those days of non-computerized system, when they use manual, some of them may be there at night looking for errors, looking for uh, differences in, in their balancing. But now everything is automated. They no longer spend such hours. The computer does those, those things for them. Once they make entries into, into the system. So it goes like that. Yeah. So you should be able to explain to us the three types of technology and how they change with time. First manual, later mechanical, and now the EDP systems, which is in vogue now for some time. That settles uh, that. There are areas of this EDP that will require attention that I need to, to let you know. The features of uh, EDP uh, system, the auditor will have to pay attention to number one, is the fact that computer-based accounting systems imposes discipline in respect of data entry. The EDPs imposes discipline in terms of data entry. Because our discipline in terms of what? Single entry is not possible under an EDP system. Can somebody tell me what single entry is? Abang, what is single entry? 
a bank single entry now. I'm hearing you, sir. I know you are hearing me. What is single entry? That you're hearing me is not in doubt. What is single entry? Mm. It's an entry that does not. Mm. That this with only one side of the cash book. How many sides should it should it deal with? Just one. How many sides should it normally deal with? It's, we have is two sides, okay. debit and credit. Uh, uh, entries other than double entries. Single entries are entries other than double entries. Entries which record a single part of a transaction. You know, the accounting principle says that every debit must have a corresponding credit. This is, isn't, isn't it? And vice, and vice versa. If you debit and you do not credit, then that is single entry. If you credit and you do not debit, that is single entry. Once you debit, you must credit. In computerized systems, it is not possible for you to debit without crediting. The system will not allow. So that discipline is imposed on, on the data entry uh, officer. So the, then uh, the computers will enforce coding system. Codes are used in sort of entries on computer. If you don't get the coding, the codes right, the entries will not be accepted by the computer. So in such a, in such a case, discipline is enforced. And then management reporting, management reporting is improved and produced more quickly. Some systems will, will include reports to be generated from the uh, data entries fed into them. And then those reports are quickly generated. If you have been involved in manual preparation of financial statement before, you will know that to draw financial statements from, from a travel is, is, not, is not an easy task. You may finish, even in your exam, someone has to draw uh, statement of financial position of the income statement. Sometimes your SOFP will not agree and you'll be looking for uh, the difference here and there in the exam. Of, but with an EDP system, it must agree because the procedures are computerized. Once the data is fed into it and you click on report, generate income statement, it will just, before you blink your eye, the thing is displayed. So those three features uh, uh, has to do with the discipline imposed on data, uh, on data entry by the EDP system. Another feature is that computers can confer spurious authenticity on computer reports. I want you to understand, to listen to this very well. Computers can confer spurious. When we say something is spurious, who understands that? Bisala uh, Rukayat, talk to me about spurious, spurious. What is spurious? When I say spurious, spurious authenticity. Use them together or explain spurious so that we will know if you understand. We are listening. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> IDK. Okay. Uh, any of the Moya Soros should uh, come to the rescue. <laughs> Any of the movie or sorry. Don't sorry, don't, fight, uh, don't, don't, fight, don't fight over you too. I know there are two of you, so don't fight over that. Uh, yes. Uh uh Bolo Muya said Muya Soraya. What is this? Put me not spurious, spurious, spurious. <laughs> okay. Is anybody attempting? Okay, give yes, sir. Okay, yes, attempt it. Um, period. It means like the financial period, now the maybe a year. S-P-S-P-U-R-I-O-U-S. Not period. False. No, when false. something is when false. something is false. fake or false, uh -huh. fake. false report. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 who is? Is that me? Are they doing? No, I'm not the Akilabi. I start talk so. One person, one person, ah. Salami, are they doing, sir? Okay. You have answered for yourself as time out. When something is fake, when something is not real, you, can, you say it is spurious, you know? Like, for instance, in Nigeria, uh, government gives spurious sense of security. They tell you, don't worry. 
We are talking of the situation. Oh, okay. The next day, the next day, people are kidnapped and carried to the bush. And they say, no, we are talking of the situation. The next day, again, the schools are bombarded. People can't tell the way. So the security of the country is spurious. You know, spurious, spurious, you know, so something fake, something unreal, something untruth. So it is believed that once uh, processions are processed through the computer, it should be authentic, isn't it? So the belief or reliance on that computer report could be spurious. It, it gives a sense of fake, fake reliance, fake authenticity, because the system is, uh, is computerized. So we'll come, to, we'll come to explain that later. And then uh, what again? Auditors will need to be skeptical and utilize other forms of uh, evidence to support the output of EDP systems. Statisticism is important. A sense of doubt, a sense of judgment that does not take line hook and sinker, what has been given to you, you know? You must validate and verify that what you have is actually true and, uh, and, and, and they're useful. That is what we are talking about there. Let me give you an example. I do tell you that uh, you can use spatial analysis to detect if, if somebody is lying on, on a set of accounts or not. If you say your rate of stock turnover, it, 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 it determines the number of times of stock replenishment during a period, okay? The more, the higher your rate of stock turnover, the lower your capital is supposed to be, working capital. Because if you have bigger working capital, if you have a larger amount of working capital, you'll not be going to the market too frequently. You will stay and sell over a long period before you now go to buy another set of stores. But if your capital is small, you can only buy little. When you sell that little, you go to the market again. You sell that little, you go to the market again. The number of times that you go to the market is the rate of stock turnover. Are you with me? So if you see a client account, with high rate of stock turnover and uh, a large amount of working capital. That's something is wrong somewhere. It, does, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. There's no consistency in, in, in the analytical review. So carried out. That is one example. Other example is when you see a client record that shows increased sales, increased turnover. Sales is on the increase, you know? And the uh, gross profit consequently is also on the increase. You overhead the expenses on the decrease. But by the time you look at it, profits also start to increase. Consequently, you expect that there should be money in the bank, isn't it? Are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Fabio and Nansa yes, now. But when you yes, go to the bank and the cash balance is low, it doesn't tally with those experiences. Increase this, increase the gross profit, increase net profit should lead to increased cash now but you, do, you, you, you don't find cash there. And there are no debtors we got increasing to show that you, you sold on credit. So when you do not have those things uh, agreeing, you can detect that somebody is playing with data. And uh, that's what we call creative accounting. Clients are used to doing creative uh, accounting. So the auditor should be skeptical and use other methods of confirming that what he has been presented with is actually good uh, to deal with, you know, that is uh, uh, what we are talking about. That is that you consider external sources of evidence in addition to his own personal tests, which he will conduct in, in evaluating the client's uh, financial reports. So that settles the background information which is needed in respect of uh, EDP systems. One peculiar thing that you need to know on the audit challenges of EDP system is the fact that that's what we call audit trail. Audit trail is lost. Audit trail. Who can explain audit trail to me? Audit trail. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, so, Tosi is speaking, Abi. Is this Tosi in Falade? Sir? Are you, is that Tosi Faladi? Yes, sir. You are not in the last class, were you? I was, sir, but in the middle of the class, rain started falling and the network went off. That was like 20 minutes to the class ended. 
Did you start with us? Yes, I did. And I took your attendance. No, sir, but you didn't take my attendance, sir. Uh, so you didn't start with us now. Those who started with us had the, attend had the attendance taken. That is the auditor's control in this case now. That's my control. I took the attendance at the start. I've taken it at the start of today's class now. I'm not, and you are not there. Sir, it is network problem. My network is bad. Network was bad on, on Monday. Network is bad on Wednesday. Sir, I'm, even using say, some, maybe, I'm using a friend of now. Maybe you come on Friday again for the test. Network may be bad, isn't no, it? No, eh, not in Jesus' name. The network will not be bad on Friday. Ah, Nigerians. What's Jesus' matter in this, in this now? Eh? You are able to get in the middle of the last. Network is not bad. The discipline to I'm using, I have to go and meet someone to put on a hot spot. Sure to die. <laughs> Tell me your audit trail to build yourself out. Audit trail. Audit trail. Uh, uh. C R A I L. You have never heard about it before. Or, C R A I L. Or you forgot, or you forgot during the acid strike. No, sir. It's like it's, I think it's like a system that traces detailed transactions. That traces detailed transactions. You are on the way, but. Not, 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 not necessarily detailed transaction, but it depends on what you have in mind. It needs, like, in an accounting record. You are not talking like an accountant. You are still speaking like a confused person. I don't know you allow me help. No, no, no. Let, let allow me move in help. IDK, or you want to, or you want to attend? If you don't know, just the IDK so that we can move forward, move on. Oh yeah, audit trail, audit trail. Some of you are you, you, you are asking for it on Google, Abby. If you search for it on Google, it may not give you what I it may not give you exactly what I want. It only lead you. Except you understand what it is. To explain it may be difficult. Who did I call? Who did I call that is not talking now? I call somebody, the person is not talking. That Kelani help. Move the cards. I be case, sir. <laughs> ah. Okay, when is when, yes, when is uh, when I is, want when is, to help when is, when is Friday? I'm so lucky. Debora, Debora, look, yes. Tell me why now. When did you come? We didn't know. Anna, did you take your attendance? No, sir. Okay, take your attendance with me. The answer to my question. How did you feel? Are you all right? You are standing very close. I'm not feeling fine, sir. You are not feeling fine. You need, you need to be edited. <laughs> Audit trail. Any attempt? Audit trail. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, please do. Track transaction. Um, I think. Audit trail should be the backtracking of um read it, read, read, read it as you as it is on your Google. Read it let us yeah. I know you are, no, you are checking on Google. So you are bang, you are bang, but... <laughs> I think it is the trailing as in um, backtracking of um transactions. For example, like day to day buying and selling. You don't know it. You don't know it. You don't Guys. know it. I told you, I if you see it, like, if you see it, if you see it online. Let me try. Oh, yeah, try. It is tracing of uh, transactions or and tracking how? the original source. Okay. Can you can you give an example? Sir, can I give an example? Uh, uh, example, I can give examples of all these three. Okay. Yeah, do. Debit, debit card, credit 
card, cash payment, check. Cash up. And... No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Now, can this I is. Oh, uh, yeah, try. That's the last try. Our receipt from maybe grocery store, like. Now, listen to me. When you want to do audit trail, the definitions that some of you gave or read are in order, but the application is what you may not understand. Some of some people said back tracing. Some people said uh, tracing through the flow of transactions. All of those are in order. Let me give you an example. If you see plant and machinery, if you see plant and machinery, it is part of financial position. Are you with me? And then you go to the details in, in the, what do you call it? Uh, uh, plant, uh, non current uh, access schedule, PPE, plant property and equipment. You go to the PPE schedule and you see additions to fixed assets. And you see a particular asset there, maybe motor vehicle or any equipment. And you can identify that, 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 that asset in the, in the books. You can trace the entry back to the source document for which it is, it is, it is made up. You trace that balance sheet, uh, that uh, SOFP entry to the trial balance, to the ledger, to the cash book where it arose. So when you trace an entry on a transaction from source to completion, from the beginning of that transaction to the end of the transaction, you are carrying out audit trail. For instance, asset acquired, you debited uh, asset, you credited cash, okay? Then you don't go to the ledger. You go to the asset account, you, you check the debit entry there. Okay, you go to the travel balance, you find the asset inside your travel balance as part of the other assets. Now go to the SOFP and it is there. So you are checking through all the stages of the processing of that transaction from the beginning to the end. That is audit trail. Why audit trail is used by the auditor is to confirm systems effectiveness. To confirm what? To confirm what? System activeness. System activeness. Effectiveness. System effectiveness. How effective is the system? You know? So it is assumed, it is assumed that if that single transaction can be processed correctly, others will have been processed correctly. You understand? Have you forgotten yes. the approaches to, to auditing? Uh, compliance test, uh, substantive test. Compliance tests are systems based. Substantive tests are transaction based. You know, in the case of compliance tests, which is system based, you are testing the system for, for effectiveness. You take a transaction, you check through the processing. If it is correctly done, you then assume that other transactions passing through that system will have been correctly done. Are you with me? So, so in the case of audit trade, it is checking through the processing stages of a transaction from the beginning to the end. In the case of EDP, it is not possible. It's not because there are aspects of it that the auditor will not see physically. Data is not held uh, in physical forms. Data is electronic, you know? The processing will not be shown. It's inside the computer. You only see the output. The input, then the output. That's all you see. So the trail will be lost. And that creates challenges. To, to to audit. So what are, the, what are the difficulties associated with computerized systems? That's where we are now. Difficulties associated with computerized systems. Number one, transactions can be generated by the computer automatic, automatically. Computers can generate transactions automatically because if, if, if you are used to what we call direct debit system, it's commonly used in advanced countries like the UK here. Uh, it's not common in Nigeria, but you should, maybe you have heard it about it. If you want to pay somebody that you are owing, if you, if you make regular payment to somebody, instead of you initiating payment each time, you can ask your bank, to, okay, you, you know from your bank reconciliation now, direct debit, direct debit. Money is which you authorize the bank to be taken from your account to somebody else periodically. So that direct debit. So the computer can generate automatic transactions itself. By, by issuing direct debits against you or something. So it doesn't require, it doesn't require new authorization each time that the debit has to take place. So that's, that's a difficulty associated with computer system that also needs to pay attention to. Other one is that electronic forms of trading 
Redemption forms of credit require validation checks, you know, and the secure payments and the secure payments. Uh, that's what you call e-commerce. Yes, e-commerce. There are new forms of trading, and uh, through websites. These are these are done through uh, web, web websites. So you want to see what checks are in place to validate such uh, transactions, and they make sure that the payments are secured. That's why we need to evaluate the associated controls in respect of this. Then the third one is that computer performs complex calculations without showing you or telling you how it is done. You know, like for instance, computer may generate interest on a customer's account, the interest on loans is computer generated. It is not manually inputted, but doesn't tell you how it is calculated. So the details are not available to, to be seen. And then transactions can be ex exchanged between systems or locations using EDI, electronic data interchange, without any paper trail. Uh, in advanced countries like this, there are some uh, arrangements with uh, organizations such that when your stock is low, you don't have to initiate an ordering process before your supplier will know and then supply you immediately. So the system has been set in a way that it will trigger an alert to your supplier that your store has reached the other level. And then that supplier will just go ahead and supply. So without further human interface. So this is this, this another area uh, of EDP that may create uh, difficulties uh, of uh, installing controls or checking controls because the human interface in this is also minimal. Then the principle of uh, segregation of duties as a control mayor is uh, not totally applicable because the computer systems you uses uh, they use a low number of staff you know it re reduced number of personnel employed on computer systems so how can you now segregate duties you know or who can explain the the segregation of duties as a control in what way is segregation of duties a control in edp audit who has not answered, who has not asked me a question before volunteer for five marks. My network is breaking. So you want to answer the question because your network is breaking or you don't want to answer? Oh. Whose network is breaking? Is that true, Kayat? Yes, oh, sir. Yes. Yeah. My network is breaking. How does it operate as a control? How does what, sir? Segregation of duties operate as a control. Segregation of duties. If you can help our girl, how trust is your friend? Hello, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> um, I feel like segregation of duties. Um as regards to control shows how um, um, the duties are, are assigned to different um, to different parts of the organization. Mm. Oh, Joe, no. <laughs> that will only fetch you one over 10. So one over 10, okay. Then you, because you didn't hit the nail uh, at the head. Okay, it's like division of labor, but in like on organization as regards to control. Hey, what is on You are returning the question. No, it's on Kokan. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the practical aspect of auditing is not understood by you. When you are taught the traditional auditing, all of these things should have been should have been taught to you. Auditing should be taught with practice, with practice in mind, not theory, not theory. You should be able to imagine what you are being taught or what you know in auditing. Maybe I'm saying it because I'm, I am myself an auditor. I, I, I am an external auditor presently. I've been an internal auditor in the university before. So telling you auditing shouldn't be a difficult thing from practical viewpoint. Let me tell you, each of those controls that you have uh, has their own peculiarities. 
when you say celebration of duties, you don't want a person to carry out more than one task to avoid compromise. Okay, for instance, you want to you want to buy some goods and pay for it. You know, the person will initiate the order for the goods. It's not the one that would that would, that will make payment for the goods. The person who makes payment for the goods is not the one that will receive the goods into store. The person who receives the goods into store is not the one that will issue the goods to the user department. You are separating the duties among a number of staff so that it will only take collusion between them before they can be fraudulent. For instance, if 10 units are bought and you want to inflate it to 50 units to defraud the organization, you cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone because there are many people involved in the handling or processing of the transaction. That's the source of celebration of duties. When you come to EDP systems, that is not possible because low number of staff, few number of staff are employed in computerized systems, not large number of staff as you find in the manual system. Does that make sense to us a little? Yes, sir. Let me put on the, the light in my room so that you can see me better. I can see you, sir. I can see you. Shine, shine, Bobo. Ah, see you. <laughs> oh, hello. I bang because 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 Nigeria is far from UK. You think I cannot I cannot deal with you, Abi? <laughs> Don't worry. When I come back, I'm going to summon you to my office. No, no sir, not like that, sir. I like to be in there. So I will say you don't come back. I no, but then I said you have graduated now. We will be celebrating together as colleagues. That's my prayer for you. Amen. Amen. Okay, amen. so let's continue, let's continue with our discussion. I know I know you want to say amen. Uh, now, the audit risk, what audit risk are, are associated with EDP systems? You know, on Monday, we discussed audit risk and uh, we, we, we identified the inherent risk and the, the control risk as part of uh, the risk which are related to the entity. And then we said detection risk, is uh, for uh, is for the auditor. Now, the inherent and control risk, which I'm going to talk about now, is the one relating to the client company that operates EDP system. So, what areas of attention should the auditor uh, uh, consider in evaluating the audit risk associated with clients that use EDP systems? I'm going to break that down into the inherent risk and the control risk. So we start with uh, the inherent risk uh, first. And we'll be talking, I'll be giving you three of such uh, areas of uh, consideration. The first one is a management indifference in respect of controls. Management indifference in respect of controls. What does that mean? Management may say that when the controls are, are the, the controls are in the hands of the IT uh, department. So we should really be, we should really be better that after they are using a computerized system. So management will show indifference. Management is not too bothered. Management is not too concerned. They believe that it is not in their hands to do control again. Whereas management has a responsibility to ensure that controls are installed. But because they have not brought in computers to help them, they say, well, so the commitment to control may be, may be reduced. That is what I mean by, that's what I mean by management indifference to internal controls. The second consideration is uh, automatic incorrect data may continue until it is detected. If in the course of entry data, a mistake was made, that mistake will be carried on all through the processes. Nothing will happen until it is detected. Or it may never be detected. And like I told you earlier, garbage in, garbage out. 
let me tell you uh, my experience in some organizations. I won't mention them because they are places that you know, and they are government establishments where you have computerized systems. They will have taken so much money from the management saying that they want to computerize their accounts. And at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the purpose of computerization will not be achieved, all because the, they have not done what they are supposed to do in the case of computerization. If you have a, if you have a system that is computerized and the, 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 and the supervision is poor on those who operate it, the output will also be poor, you know? And that's why we call garbage in, garbage out. It is only through adequate supervision that you can have good results. So those who enter those data, just like organizations, who enter incorrect data, they just put incorrect data there. And by the time we are asking, who, who recorded, who, who posted this transaction? You cannot, you cannot know who, who the person is because there's no log, there's no log of uh, inputs. What do I mean? Log of inputs, that is, somebody who comes to, to use the computer to, to input data should sign somewhere that it is me who coming to work with this social time, social time, and these are the documents which I process. There's no log, no record of such uh, processes. We are more than one person are, are allowed to make such inputs. You get the passing book, you won't know who did, who, who did what. That's my number two. There's no input control register. All those documents that were, that were posted have not been recorded somewhere before on the register from which that person should post. Some of these controls have been absent. So data which are incorrectly recorded in, into the system may continue to show that incorrectness until it is detected. That is, if it is ever detected. That is uh, what we mean by, by that. And the third one is that, that's what we call illusion of control. Illusion of control, because processes are computerized, hence results are readily accepted. Uh, again, we want to look at the meaning of illusion. When you say illusion, if I see somebody is suffering from money illusion, what does that mean? I double L U S I O N, illusion, yes? Volunteers for extra max. It's like imaginary. Illusion is, um, I believe, imaginary, something you imagine that is not real. That's the book speaking, Abby. Yes, sir. Yes, you are right. Having a feeling of without really, without, without the thing being real. Because, okay, if, I, if, I, if you have your school fees with you before registration, your parents give you your school fees and the money is with you, you'll be feeling money illusion. I have money, I have money, but do you really have money? You don't, because you must pay that school fees. So the same way when you keep third party funds in your custody, which is not your money, you will suffer from money illusion. You think you are rich, whereas you are not, because it's not your money. Yes. It's a particular activity. So True. when you feel that there are controls in a system, whereas there are no controls really, because it's computerized, oh, there's controls though. And so you, you, you rely on the output because it's really acceptable. We, we call it illusion of con a illusion of, of control, you know, believing that because it is computerized, it must be okay. Whereas the setup does not make it okay. It's only when you set it up very well that it will be okay. Not when it is poorly set up and you are expecting results to come. No. So those three factors are the ones which we look at under inherent controls. Don't forget that the inherent factors uh, or, or inherent control has to do with the possibility of a misstatement. You understand? The possibility of a misstatement in the financial record. What is illusion of control? It can lead to a misstatement. It, it makes misstatement possible. When there is a management complicity or indifference, it can lead to that error occurring. Okay, we now want to look at what about the detection from the client's internal control system? That's the control risk we will now want to look at in relation to ID, uh, EDPs. The first one to consider there is that fraud can be generated within the computer if the software is tampered with. Fraud can be generated within the computer if the software is tampered with. 
if the swat software is allowed to, 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 to function very well, there'll be no fraud. But if it is tampered with, if it is hacked or altered, you know, it can lead to fraud. Now that means that that system will not, will not, will not, will not, will not detect whatever is happening there again. So that's one. Number two, the separation of duties may become blood or impossible because fewer staff are engaged. We explained that one earlier. Then three, data can be stolen without being detected. Data can be stolen by the staff without being detected. When you talk about data privacy or data security, it is more pronounced in advanced countries than it is in Nigeria. Take for instance, our national identity uh, information, which name collects. You see, that's the fraud of the way that we smile again it now. Oh, your data and my data. You see the hands of uh, Boko around guys, you know, you know. And uh, people complain and complain and complain. Fragment will not do anything about it because they, they, they tolerate such out of lack of knowledge. When you put your faith, your, your life in the hands of half baked individuals, it is very dangerous. So, yeah. another, another election is coming. So, you better use your, your I don't know, I'm not campaigning you, I'm not a politician, but that's what we're talking about. That Data can be studied without being detected by, uh, by, 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 by the staff who are operating on the system. And how can they do that? If, if you are taking an invoice away from an, uh, an organization before, people will see that you're taking it away. But when you want to steal data, you can just download the data into a CD or download it into a USB memory, memory stick, and then you go with it. You can even download it and send to your, to send to your email. To learn, yeah. So it is easier to steal data without detection uh, on the system, especially when you can steal the password and open it to the system. And then business continues. What do you think will happen if people can steal password into uh, the computer that is used to process student results? They will just go there and utter their own GP eh, so that they can have a better results other than what they actually store. So these are the kind of things that we're talking about that data can be stolen by, by staff without any record of this theft being discovered. Then we are routines are customized. Like in the case of uh, automatic uh, ordering system, the, it, it can be difficult to trace the authority uh, for other processes. You know, one control measure is authorization. The transactions must be approved by relevant authority. But in the case of automated transactions, you know, the system triggers an alert to the supplier, and the supplier effects supplies and payment follows without anybody coming in to give any special authorization. So that's that, that, that's another difficulty that may not allow for detection. Okay, data security may not be guaranteed because of exposure to internet to internet-based activities. Data security may not be guaranteed because of internet. Internet, they call it Ayelujara. Ayelujara. So anybody that has access can view the, your data on the internet. So you cannot talk of data security. And then, so kind of data from unauthorized intrusions has to be considered as well, such as hacking, hacking uh, of uh, sites. You know, as you are planning to secure your site, people are planning to hack that site. You know. They had INEX site before. They had CBN site before. You know, Russian hackers, all these engineers, that's what they do. You know, software engineers, they hack. You know. Then attack on data. I mean, attack on data may, may cause security threat, uh, like in the case of viruses, worms, programs, and some other forms of online attacks, which would disrupt your. Has anybody's phone been corrupted before through attacks? If you open your email carelessly, if you open up some links which, the, which you don't know about, it will corrupt your system and you will not be in charge of your affairs again. Somebody else will send it to your email and they have everything there. So you just find your unwanted communications flooding your email. Until you restart your password or you clean all that data off and start a new life before you can be sure that uh, things are in order. So all of these have, have, have to be considered as part of control 
uh, risks. So let me recast them again because it may be important for us to note. Number one, fraud can be generated from within the system if the, if the software is if the software is tampered with. Number two, the selection of duties as a control may become impossible or made difficult because of low number of staff uh, employed on computer operations. Number three, data can be studied by staff without being detected through download onto CDs or memory sticks. Number four, we are uh, operations are on routine basis and automated. Uh, special authorization may not be applicable and therefore uh, authority for other processing may not be detected. Number five, data security may not be guaranteed because of the exposure to internet-based activities, internet-based internet trading. The security of data from unauthorized intrusions may be difficult, such as hacking, uh, on, online hacking. Then viruses, trojans, and worms may attack or corrupt uh, uh, data, making such data insecure. So these are, the, these are the points to note under the control risk related to uh, audit of EDPs. Okay, what can the auditor now do when he's auditing a computerized system? We now come to what the auditor would need to do. The approaches to audit uh, in a computerized system can be divided into two. The first one is auditing around the computer. And the second one is auditing through the computer. The first one which is called auditing around the computer may also be called the black box approach. Black box approach, auditing around the computer or black box approach. In, in, in that case, data is not able to audit the processing. There are three, there are three processes now, input, processing, output. Input, processing, output. Are you with me? Input is the data input, like your invoices, your receipts, your vouchers, payment vouchers, your journal vouchers, any source document at all that you want to process. Those are the input data. It is inputted into the computer for processing. The editor can check the controls relating to input. You know, but when it comes to processing, the editor cannot go inside the computer and know what the, what the computer is doing. So it does not know, but it will wait for the output and check the output against the input. That is auditing round. It's going round the computer, not through the computer. Do you understand that? Fourteen of us cannot talk. Do you understand that? But you can't hear me. Why are we quiet? Yes, sir. Why are you sir? Why is it, sir? And that's why you cannot talk, Abi. I need to be sure you are hearing me because. Uh, I hear you. Okay. So who can describe what the auditing around the computer to me now? Auditing around the computer. What happens during auditing around the computer? Then what second what second name can it be called? <sighs> a band, be a man, talk, lead the team. I'm trying, sir. <laughs> the computer is when the audit team doesn't expect the um, IT system controls. So they will obtain source documentation from the system, from the system reports. And and compare the information to final. And you are not even starting one all over ten. You are far from what I have said so far. Who can put? Oh no, can the brother talk now? Oh. I don't know, sir. I don't have an idea, sir. I have just said it now. So why would you have an idea? Um, the last five minutes. That's that's what I've been discussing. The last five minutes. Who is going to bear me out? Abi Sola will be bear me out, girl. Come and bear me out. Oh, yeah. What other name is auditing around the computer called? Black box approach. Good. At least I'm going in. Black box approach. So, how does the auditor audit around the computer? Out of three, Areas is only able to work on two. 
what is the third one that is not able to work on? Which two is he able to work on? He works on input. He couldn't work on processing. Then he works on output. You understand how? He's able to work on the input. He's not, he's not able to work on the processing. Then he works on the output. That is running the computer. That's why he's only able to check input and output, not able to check processing. That's what we mean by black box approach or auditing around the computer. When it's auditing through the computer, data is able to check all the stages, input, processing, and output. Do, is it clearer now? Yes, sir. Okay. So auditing around the computer, the author is only able to check uh, input and output. Editing through the computer, the author is able to check input processing and output. So that is it. Okay. Um, auditors who are not able to check the processing lack the ability to penetrate the software used by the computer in processing. But those who are able to check through the processing use softwares which enable them to penetrate the software of the client using processing. <laughs> these, these, these softwares which allow the editor to check processing are what we call CATS, C-A-A-T, Computer Assisted Audit Techniques. Computer Assisted Audit Techniques, C-A-A-T, CATS. You understand that? CATS allow the auditor to check processing. It doesn't restrict the auditor to input and output checks. No, it can also check the processing as well. As the computer is processing the thing, the auditor is also able to, to check what the computer does inside there. So nothing is hidden from, 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 from the auditor. There are four types of cards that the auditor can use. There are four types of cards that the auditor can use. In order to there are four types of what? Cards now. Okay. Can you cut here? Yeah. No, no most boss are me, but tell me. Uh, let somebody tell tell now what cart is. So come on, we will do both answer any pair. I know. Com computer accessible audit technique. Hey, hey I bang it. Computer <laughs> assisted. Computer assisted. assisted audit technique. Audit technique. Ah, is the assisted I miss? <laughs> computer assisted audit techniques. Cart. Okay. When I say there are four types of cards, so now you don't be talking about the. Uh, uh, do do, no, <laughs> yeah. no, it's different to my card size. The audit software used by the auditor to check processing controls in addition to input and output controls of the client. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so there are four types which you need to know, and you may have to explain if I choose to ask. Number one, the use of dummy data, use of dummy data. Dummy, dummy data. What is dummy? When I say dummy data, what is dummy? D U W M Y. The okay. The okay. gift. I know you would like to explain matters. Tell me, dummy. Dummy. Is that I, IDK Abi? Does he wants to try? Is an information that doesn't Hello, contain sir. useful data. Hey? Information that does not do what? That doesn't contain useful data. Sir, I'm here. My network is misbehaving. Abby is my phone safe. Thank you, girl. You are, you, are, you, are, you are on the way. The data, the data used is not real data. It's hypothetical data. It's dummy data, assumed data. You understand? The editor will pick up his own data and process it through the client's uh, computer. 
Doctor has an idea of what the output should be. Are you with me? If I say two yes, plus sir. two, if I say two plus two, I know it should be four. But we now ask the we now ask the client's computer to add two plus two for me. I want to see if it if it will give me four. If it gives me four, then I can say okay, this time is working well. So the editor uses dummy data generated by himself, but processed through the client's computer to obtain okay. an output which has been predetermined by him so that it compares for correctness. Does that make sense to us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. The second one is parallel simulation. Parallel uh, simulation. Uh, parallel simulation. I know that all you will have taught you Monte Carlo simulation in, in corporate finance. Is that not correct? Yes, yes sir. Yes, Parallel simulation. What is simulation? How do you simulate? Okay, parallel simulation. Modeling the client system. You model the client system. Okay. You model the client system. Parallel simulation. You model the client system. You model the client system and then process that simulated data. data, from the data. Hardware. Modeling the client system and processing the simulated data on the client's hardware. Modeling the client system and processing the simulated data on the client's hardware. The third one. Embedded audit files. Embedded audit files. Embed. Embedded. Who will explain embed or embedded to me? Who has been asking a question since? Ah, so back from your, oh, back from your Victor been talking. Embedded audit file. Yes, I've been talking. Yes. Talk, talk again now. Talk again now. Is embedded to embed something. What does it mean? So what is that? Victor. Yes, sir. Somebody, yes, I can you somebody, somebody to help you out of your colleagues. Who is closest to you? Nominate somebody to bail you out. Sir? <laughs> Nominate somebody to bail you out. So we shall look at what we are online. We need somebody to bail you out. If something is inserted into like an application program. It's the best friend, yeah. It's just your friend, so that she should bail you out. <laughs> so, so someone is already talking to her. Somebody was laughing, not talking. And the are you helping out? Embedded building too. You build the thing into a system. The oh, audit requirements are built into the client's uh, computerized system from the when beginning. The at, the, at the design the stage, system. you build the audit requirements into it. Yeah. So that uh, as it is, as, 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 as it is being processed, a data person is going on, let's talk and obtain information, whether based on demand or on a continuous basis. The, the auditors' uh, audit requirements are built into the client's hardware system such that the auditor can obtain information either on demand or on a continuous basis. That is embedded, built into embedded audit files, audit files which are built into the client's hardware system. Mm -hmm. you know? it is also known, it's also known as a systems control audit review. Systems system. control audit review files, SCAF. S C A R M Systems Control Audit Review Files. How is the scarf used by ladies? But S C A R F Files. Just in I see your scarf, but the scarf you tie on your head. S C A R F. So the same spending with my own scarf. But my, yes, staff, yes. my staff here is systems control audit review files. Files. Systems control audit review files. That is the embedded audit files. Okay. And the last one now, the fourth one. 
interrogation software, interrogation software to examine large volume of data. Interrogation software to examine large volume of data relatively easily. If the data is going to audit First Bank, for instance, with so many branches in the country, uh, by the by the Banking Act, it has three months within which to report on its audit. If it's First Bank, a career leader that's going to audit, how many months do you think it will take him? If he has to check through transactions manually, for years he's still there. But you can use uh, interrogation interrogation software to examine large volumes of data, you know, with with ease. This is known as uh, data analytics. Data analytics. That procedure is known as data analytics. Data analytics. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? I want to go to the last uh, aspect of our study today. I don't want us to exceed 630. Controls in an EDP system can, can be divided into two. General controls and application controls. I will not be going into the details. I will just mention it to you so that we can close. Start any your questions. Controls in an EDP system can be, grouped, can be divided into two. General controls and application controls. General controls and application controls. You should be able to list them and differentiate between the two. Hmm. General controls are controls which are associated with the environment in which the EDP system is developed and operated. General controls are controls which are associated with the environment in which the EDP system is developed and operated. For example, when you restrict access to the computer department, it's a general control. You know, it's a general control. They say uh, account section, no entry. That's a general control. That's a general control. So the second one is the application control. Application controls are controls which are associated with the software being used in data processing. Yes. Application controls are controls which are associated with the softwares being used in data processing. Before I take your questions, let me give you take home questions. Take home questions. To be submitted, to be submitted within the first five minutes of our next lecture. When I come online on that day, whenever it is, you just send your thing to my email. I don't know if I can use Google team or carry out assessment on Zoom. I will find out before between now and Friday that so we know what, how we can play with uh, technology to enable us to have interactions that may be useful. The other time when we were trained at Futa, I was not paying due attention. Now I need, I need to know what to do. But I will, I will carry out personal studies to see how, how this can be done. That's why the internet is available to enrich uh, our knowledge. So my question number one is this. Question one. Question one. Question one. Question one. Question one. Identify the transformation in accounting technology, identify <laughs> the transformation in accounting technology, identifying the transformation in accounting technology. Stating, stating possible possible advantages and or disadvantages. 
and and or disadvantages. Shola, you cannot see. Shola. Number two. What matters? What matters would interest the auditor in his evaluation of audit risk in computerized accounting systems? What matters would interest the auditor in evaluating audit risk in EDP systems? What matters would interest the editor in evaluating audit risk in EDP systems? Remember to discuss your answer under the two main groups. You know what those two main groups are? The inherent control and the uh, the inherent risk and the control risk. That's what I'm talking about. Discuss them under both uh, headings. <laughs> Number three now. Number three. Discuss the approaches. that the auditor may adopt in the audit of EDP systems. Discuss the approaches that the auditor may adopt in the audit of EDP systems. Bringing out clearly, bringing out clearly the difference, if any, bringing out clearly the difference, if any, the difference, comma, if any, comma, between the two approaches. Bringing out clearly the difference, if any, between the two approaches. The last question number four now. Discuss the types of computer assisted audit techniques available to the auditor in carrying out the audits of EDP systems. Discuss the types of cards available to the auditor in carrying out the audit of EDP systems. Sir, hmm? uh, please, can you repeat number four again? Yeah. When you replay the audio, you will correct the mistake. <laughs> I'm close to the ending time of the lecture. I don't want to overstretch it. Can I take your questions now? You have 10 minutes for questions before we close. Yeah, um, I think that how do you say we should submit our assignment? Just get it ready in soft in soft copy and, and send to my email. Send it, send it in PDF. Send it in PDF copy to Aoakinduko at futa dot edu dot ng. Do you all have futa email addresses now? No, sir. You do. We do, oh, sir. Oh, I say, uh, I am no. telling you that you do. You have futa emails, but we didn't obtain I'm... it for you. I okay. asked them to create. I asked them to create emails for you when I was HOD. 
and they may friends in the Kota ICT did, but to now connect it for you, I don't know what happened, why they didn't release it. All of you have Futa emails. Now, now, as part of these online lectures, we should have been relating through Futa emails. That's what, that's what, that's what should have happened. Uh, anyway, I really don't know. What do we do? And you can attach it on WhatsApp. Yes. You can submit, okay. it, submit it through our platform. Through what? You can submit on our WhatsApp platform. I'm not asking you to submit all of these. So these are practice questions. I'm not even asking you to submit. Just take any one of it. Okay. Take any Just... one of it. You know, we are not. We are not doing practice all. But, really but write on any one of it. Okay. You mean any one of the top windows? Any write one. The one. Any one of the four. Okay, sir. But Sorry, I sir. Find all of it. Es excuse me, sir. Yes. Can we have uh, the recordings of today's lectures and the notes, sir? Very good. Where is the notes? Of of today's lecture, sir. Which note? Which note? The recording, yes. Which note are you going to have? PDF. On the, uh, maybe the PDF on the uh, editing of computerized. Of, who tells, oh, yeah, who right. tells you I have PDF? I don't have PDF. Sir? I don't have PDF notes. If I have, if I, have I will give you. <laughs> you know, the last time, um, on Monday, I followed the, the recordings very early. Yes, sir. I'm going to do so now again. As soon as it is done, I'll send it to you. I don't have PDF. If I have PDF, I will be glad to give it to you. Replay it, listen to it, make up your notes. When I'm going to set your exam question, I will replay it, listen to it, and pick my questions as well. Just where I'm drawing questions please. now. That's where I'm going to draw your questions. Hello, sir. Please, my attendance. So, so important to me. Ah. Okay. Maybe it's just five marks. Ah, so it's important to more than sixty-five. Give five here. Go, go, man. I lost say. You never can say. Talking about A, I want you all to work very hard. I want you. All to, I want you all to work very hard. You know, I do not have any difficulties calling students A if they if they merit it. As many as are eligible to have A will have it. That's not my problem at all. It only shows that we have worked well. But your paper should be such that when the, when the external examiner sees it, he will know that you are entitled to what I have graded you. So I want you to work very hard. When we meet, okay. on, when we meet on Friday, I will take on the question, because Friday, Friday will be revision generally. I'm going to discuss the last questions which, the last question which you, uh, you wrote. Okay. Together with all that we have done so far, mm. yeah. and I'll bring questions on all the topics that I've talked to so far, like I've done today. Now, I will bring questions on all of those ones as well. So, you will now have a pool of questions from which we shall be picking eventually. That's what I can do to assist you. So, a little bit of hard work on your part will be helpful. Our friends who have not been coming to class, about six, about six of you, what do we do about them? You know. Forgive them. Eh? Forgive them. Forgive them, sir. You know that you can't compare the Nigeria. Them. Just hey, you see, you can't compare the network my, in Nigeria. My, my sister, I am not, they do not offend me. Yes. How would they write the exam without knowledge? That's my question. <laughs> no, don't worry. We'll, we'll, when, when we sit down for revision, we we'll all, we'll all know we'll would revise and be able to write the exam. But you will it's agree. You will agree. You will agree with me that what you hear first hand is better than what you hear second hand. Yes, sir. As you, as you are listening to me now, you have the chance to ask questions and you have the chance to understand me very well. But when you relate to others, it will be discounted. Either, either there will be either information overload or reduced uh, information content. Either of those can happen. But anyway, I wish everybody good luck. I'm not offended Thank by anybody. You, I, I know that there are constraints. Constraints of data, constraints of finance, constraints of technology, 
some people's phones are, are, are bad since, since they are just trying. Some are even not, have not even resumed. You don't even know that uh, it is real, that actually is bad to work. Okay. <laughs> some are maternity leave, some are maternity leave. It's work. Um, it's not easy. Abby? But whether, whether, whether government wants it or not, God will see us through. Amen. You, you, you must, you must. Amen. Like I used to tell you, make the best of every ugly situation. That allows circumstances to weigh you down. Just put in your best. So you need higher grade so as to overcome the effect of any performance that you had in the past, which made you to repeat the course. You need higher grade so your GP can be of good effect. And it is you that can help yourself. So I wish you the best of luck. Amen. Thank you. Let's call it a day. Thank you very much for your attendance. God bless you. Uh, when are we meeting at Friday, 4 o'clock? Yes, sir. 4 o'clock. Yes, sir. Was Those who go to mass will have come back. Yes, yes sir. Yes. OK, bye. So, so out of my attendance, I was, I was talking, but you could not hear me. You are? Sir, attendance, I was talking. That's a okay gift. It's gone. gone. Noted. Sir? It is noted. Yes, I'm attending.